Hello everyone and welcome back to the Alfred and Town official watch along here where we take on Chester this afternoon in what is a big game for our playoff chances. The winner today, well if there is a winner, will take a massive stride towards securing a playoff spot before the end of the season. Uh, but we do have a few things to talk about before the game starts today, which is why we're on at 10-2. We've got... Um, Where's Vaughan? Where's Vaughan? Where again? It's like, where's Wally? Where? <laughs> He's never here. Um, yeah, where's Vaughan again? We've got uh, me and Quinton on the comms today here in Chester. Um, an interesting... I forgot what I was going to say. Harry Perrett's back on the bench. That completely left my train of thought for like a whole minute. Harry Perrett's back in the squad on the bench. Uh, what we thought was going to see him out um, for a long time. Has seen him. He's back on the bench today. He's been he warmed up yeah. on Friday. He's warmed up today. He's on the bench. Uh, whether he's match fit, we don't know. But he's back on the bench. Is the uh, biggest bit of team news we've got as well as we very sorry, very attacking looking bench at that state as well. With Askew, obviously the keeper, Salmon, Perrett, Jeremy Donner, and Ryan Taylor. It's a very yeah. very well three forwards on there. Perrett who can play anywhere. Yeah, he, really <laughs> can, he really can play it anywhere. <laughs> and the goalkeeper. Um, we will be bringing you these scores from around the kind of Midlands teams and the teams in the National League North. Um, but the one we're going to look out for mainly in the National League North is Curzon Ashton against South Shields as they are two teams in and around us. Uh, South Shields sitting one point above us with the one game extra played and Curzon Ashton sitting in eighth with the one game extra played but I believe only two points off us off the top of my head am I right in saying that? They're, they're on the same yeah. points as we are. Oh, same level, points. Level us, but, uh, yeah sorry I've been corrected level on points with Curzon Ashton with a game less played so that's um, a massive game for us to watch out for we'd love a draw there. <laughs> um, they'd love a draw yes. They'd love a draw here yeah definitely. Um, so we can only hope Curzon and South Shields keep each other out um, because we, obviously we play Curzon next on Saturday at the uh, Impact Arena this last time we played Curzon at Curzon it was a 2-1 defeat in a bizarre red card for Curzon with a handball off yeah. the line and Joshua Claxton getting his third goal for the club Sometimes um, you feel that it, like you, you go ages without playing sides. So sometimes, you can say like Scunthorpe, uh, sorry Scarborough, played them really early in the season. They played them really late. Whereas Curzon seems like it's come around very quickly, doesn't it? Same with uh, Spennymoor, really yeah, as twice well. In, twice in what a month, six weeks. Yeah, like we said, they said um, when when we were leaving Spennymoor, the the guy who did the commentary for Spennymoor said, um, "Oh, good luck for the rest of the season." I said, "Yeah, we'll see you in a month." <laughs> So we're just now waiting for the players to come out. I believe they're in the tunnel. The tunnel's out. All the substitutes are making their way on to the bench. But while we wait for the teams to come out, we will go through the lineups. I'll bring you the home team, and Quint will bring you the. Uh, sorry, I'll bring you our side, and Quint will bring you the Chester time. So for us, it's obviously, as always, number one, George Willis in goal. Number two, Joshua Claxton. Number four, Adam Lund. Number five, Kennedy Diggy. Number six, Dwayne Wiley. Number seven, Jordan Thewlis. Number eight, George Cantrell. Nine, Jake Day. Ten, Liam Waldock. Twenty-two, Billy Fuster. Twenty-three, Nathan Newell. And on the bench is Lewis Salmon, Harry Perrett, Jake Askew, Jerry McDonough and Ryan Taylor which leaves an unchanged side for Alfred and this afternoon. Yeah, and for Chester, Will Stanway in goal, Nathan Woodthorpe, two, number four, Declan Weeks, number five, Harrison Burke, number six, Mighty Williams, seven, Tom Pears, eight, George Glendon, who is the captain for today, 11 is Adam Thomas, eight is Ben Tollett, 25 is Kevin Roberts, and 27 is Kieran Burton. And to the subs, Joel Taylor, Christian Norton, Reese Daly, Evan Murray, and Ollie Haywood. Our officials today are Oliver Mackey. Oliver Mackey, official uh, today? He, uh, he was the referee when we played Scunthorpe at home in a 2-2 draw. Yep. And I believe uh, he refereed another draw, which escaped me at this moment. Um, what, who, what, what games did the referee do? With, uh, Scunthorpe and... Scunthorpe at home and Peterborough Sports away. Peterborough Sports away, that's why I couldn't remember it, because I wasn't there. <laughs> um, that was a 1-1 draw as well. Obviously sent off um, a scumfot player after about six minutes 
Um, He's welcome to do that again today. Yeah, we, 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 we'd welcome that. Um, we, we'd well, <laughs> uh, we've got... I, I feel like I was going to say an interesting fact. It's probably a very well-known fact, and everyone probably who knows anything about the league will know, but the Chester goalkeeper, Will Stanway, is the brother of England international, Georgia Stanway, um, which is, if you've listened to any sort of commentary to do with Chester this season, that's probably been said. Um, but we'll say it anyway. The ground is filling up. I mean, I can't see our close aside, but the, the standing stand to our right is rammed, full, bouncing. The away stand... Well, the way away half of the stand, I'm not too sure where it starts. But a well-travelled Alfreton today. Yeah, very well-travelled. We, we had a good turnout on Friday as well, so a good turnout today as well. Um, good to see from our guys as well as everyone joining us on the live stream this afternoon. We are moments away from the players taking to the pitch, and here they come, just as I'm saying it. That's great timing. Here come the teams Dwayne Wiley leading out Alfreton in that yellow away kit with a questionable grey shots I feel like we say every away game you say every away game Question <laughs> I know you like them I like it but although I must say the uh, although I question the shots the goalkeeper kit for the away the is purple. beautiful yeah George Willis looking very dapper yep. in the purple goalkeeping away, away kit. He looks very dapper on Friday as well with that performance. He was absolutely unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Rolls-Royce performance from George Willis on Friday. And rightfully, Matty's man of the match on Friday as well. Um, keeping out a semi from six yards out and making three or four really important saves after that as well in the second half in what was a 1-0 win. And as well... Um, Liam pointed it out really that the Rushall manager gave a really fair assessment on the game against us. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised to see him come out in his interview and say we should have got more from that game. We've had multiple chances. The goalkeeper kept the, kept them in it, but he was really fair in the fact that we did have chances and we were mm. more dominant. But they had good chances, and George yeah, Willis rose I mean, to that to every single one of them. Yeah, I mean we've played we've played better. I think it's fair to say. I think Willis has had a lot to do. He's had much quieter days than that. Um, hopefully he has a bit of a quieter day today because he had to make four or five really big saves where you would probably say the attack has got the advantage in the opportunity. Unfortunately for Russia, it's probably why they're in the position they're in. As the mascots run off the pitch, George Willis... Why do the keepers do that? What, go touch the ball? Go touch the ball. I think every goalkeeper has a ritual. My ritual when I played as a yeah. goalkeeper, the I used to go and touch the crossbar. The first big boo rings around the stadium today as the clubs have swapped ends, meaning Alfreton shoot towards the empty left-hand side. And to to shoot towards the Harry McNally Terrace. We've got... What do you reckon for score prediction? Because... Uh, my, my dad's not very optimistic and gone with a 2 0 loss. That's the first predicted loss he's gone with all season. I'm going to say 2 0 Alfreton today. 4 0. 4 0. 4 0 Alfreton. So Bill's bet comes in. Over 3.5. Well, we are moments away from kickoff. 20 of you already in the stream with us this afternoon. Thanks I'm everyone for tuning in for kickoff. And I'm going to start the clock. Oh, what he's remembered. He's remembered. The clock on the screen will be accurate today because as he blows his whistle, I'm going to press the start button. Referee looks like he's having a bit of word with George Willis before we kick off. I'm not sure what's going on there, but we are waiting for Bennett Tollett to oh. take kick off for the hosts. They are throwing an object off the pitch. <laughs> yep. I think we've had an object thrown onto the pitch already, which is Tollett gets us underway, goes all the way back to Stanway in the Chester goal. Welcome to Chester. Clips it long towards um, Tom Piers, but it's won by Wiley and hooked away by Lund. Jake Day challenges Kieran Burton, but Burton gets ahead and gets the ball forward. 
we got these awkward few minutes at the start of every game that we seem to have this season where the ball just kind of pings up and down um, from one end to the other in the air and the header's going in and Burton will go all the way home to Stanway now. We've got that phase of play over it. Goes long towards Pease again but headed away by Wiley and Declan Weeks looks to go inside but Cantrell clears. Harrison Burt throws down the line and headed away by Newell into the middle. Lund pokes it away but intercepted by Matty Williams. Chester will spread the ball out onto the left hand side. Nathan Woodball drops the ball into the middle for captain George Glendon who goes back to Burton. Chester comfortable in possession. Keeping it in their half. Alfred and happy to let them have it and soak up the pressure. The ball moving from left to right. Patient play from Chester. Burton's on the ball on the far side. Looks to clip it in behind for Piers, who the ball's flicked on by Diggy and Piers gets there and it's just wide of the post. An early scare for Alfred as the ball was sent over the top from Burton. Piers chasing him behind. Diggy got a touch on it, but it still fell. Willis quickly off his line, did just enough. Diggy probably would have been better off leaving it because he kind of took the pace off the ball by Hedner in it. Yeah. And then it kind of sat nicely in between him and, and Willis for for Tom Piers. Tom Pierce to kind of look to flick it over him, but it, 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 was, a, it was a poor effort. Um, and, and off we go. We've just we've just seen <laughs> the Chester manager boo George Willis. Jake Day flicks the ball on towards Jordan Thewlis. It comes back, but Adam Lund challenges and it'll fall for Claxton, who hooks it towards Jake Day. Kind of a bit of pinball, but the ball's ended up back at Joshua Claxton's feet on the right side. Who's going to Jake Day looked put it in the middle make. today? Jake Day heads it down. It's, it will be headed away by Adam Thomas, but he was offside as the assistant on the far side lifts up his flag correctly. But yeah, definitely an early scare for Often there. As Tom Pierce got sent in behind by Kieran Burton, Diggy trying to get a touch on it, but really helping out the attacker who, as, a, as a, if you're a Chester fan, you'd like to see him do better and finish that early on and put your team on the front foot because an early goal against a side like us will do you a world of good. Um, Another ball over the top there, looking to cause a problem. Willis out quick enough. Yes. Tries to smash it miles away. Comes back off the back of the stadium and kind of back into play. But yeah. They're not able to take it quickly and we kind of get set back up. Burke looking to throw the ball into the player. He does. Clacky nicks it, but he's fouled as he kind of steps away with the ball. I'm just waiting for the uh, man who fouled him to turn around. I believe... It was Glendon. It was. He had Cl Josh Claxton just nicking in front of him after he took his first touch. Took the ball off the Chester captain who did a little bit too much to try and win it back and the referee blows for a foul. George Willis will take it just towards the <coughs> corner of the edge of his box. And he sends it central towards the head of Jake Deer who loses out and Chester will look to come forward but waste possession as Wiley puts it back forward and a bit of head tennis between Burke and Wiley. The ball comes back over the top from Wiley and it'll run all the way through to Stanway in the in the Chester goal. I'm just trying to see if we've got any no, score no, updates no, early on. No goal so far in the division. Another ball goes long, but Piers is not Although Kingsland Town have taken the lead against Scarborough. Scarborough, who were once high flying and in the dizzy heights of third, have fallen and fallen since they got there. And are now losing to Kingsland, who have made themselves look a lot safer in recent weeks as Liam Waldock breaks away in Very the midfield. But field. the Chester defender will step up and put in a good challenge to put the ball into touch as Josh Claxton will take this throw in, he'll throw it down the line as Jake Day makes his way over to the channel if you can hear that, that is Billy Heath shouting from the touchline he's not too far to be fair <laughs> Chester player does well as he gets the ball to Declan Weeks and the ball comes out wide 
for Adam Thomas to charge down the right. Burke in support. Jordan Thewlis pressuring. Cantrell steps up. Cantrell forces. Kevin Roberts to go all the way back to his goalkeeper. Chester, once again, they're going to be very patient with the ball. Comfortable in possession. They're going to really play the war of attrition and take the time to break down Alfreton. Obviously, in the reverse fixture, Chester took the lead before a uh, equaliser went in from a corner later on. Flicked on by Thomas toward Piers. Wiley does well. It's hooked forward and Burke will get the ball under control and he cuts past Fulis and looks to dink it over the top. But it's headed away by Claxton. But Glendon wins it back. Once Good again. Good contest so far. Yeah. Chester clearly comfortable keeping the ball. They want to be in control. The ball goes through the centre, past everyone and all the way into George Willis's box and he'll collect it comfortably. Curzon have taken the lead against South Shields. Not what we wanted to hear uh, three minutes into that game. No, I don't mind. If one of them has to win, I think it's Curzon. I think they're, they're obviously doing well and obviously we're, we're only looking I'd difficult, isn't it? I'd want the, the Curzon momentum to stop with us playing them on Saturday. Right, Kidderminster have taken the lead against champions Chesterfield. Good job they've already won the league because they couldn't buy a win in the last month. Yeah, but I think when you're on the beers because you've won the league, it's tough to put a decent effort in on the match day, isn't it? The, they won the league two months ago. They should be off the biggest by now. Brackley take the lead against le league leaders Tamworth. We know how this one ends, though. Yeah, Tamworth will find a way. They'll probably get two red cards and still find a way. Willis goes long from a goal kick and it's headed back by Chester, but Ken Diggy will take his time and go back to Willis, who oh, slices the ball up and out, and Chester will have a throw in right in the Alfreton corner. A really promising position for the hosts. And K K Kieran Burton will take the throw in. Apologies if you can hear some uh, unsavory language in the background. Glendon goes back to Burton, who looks to whip it in, but a deflection off a yellow man, and it'll go out for a corner. Kings Lynn double the lead against Scarborough to two after eight minutes. I'm not sure. I think they've gone offside. to offside uh, sloppy really yep. to give away possession in a promising position like that for Chester but it favours us so nice yeah I mean they've all, you've got a big big cheer when George Willis sl slices it out and you think oh well we're going to give him position away really easily there and then they kind of give it a straight back so yeah, I think well, it's got That's a long. big tussle there between. Yeah, Burton and Day really having a, a battle there. So as Liam Waldock comes away with the ball, and oh, he could find his way into the book very no, early on I here. No. No, I, yeah, I think it looked worse than it was. It was depending on whether the referee entertains the crowd's reaction and whether he saw it in a worse light. But it looks like Waldock's going to get away with a warning as he dove into a challenge there and gives away a free kick. Stanway will take the free kick for Chester as he steps up to take. He takes, he looks to dink it in behind. Fuster does really well to get clear and Dick Dale go up to challenge. He doesn't win but it's come back oh. through and Jordan Fulis is chasing him behind. Burton goes home getting just enough on it to stop the club's top scorer Jordan Thewlis to latch on to the end of that well, look, Rush All Olympic have taken the lead against Boston it's going to be really loud for me Bursted eardrums by half time. Oh, now I can't hear. 
Clacky throws the ball down the line. Dare gives it to back to Clacky, who goes to put it down the line, but Clacky puts it straight out for the chest to throw in, despite his protests. Burton goes down the line quick. Clacky wins it and heads it forward again. If ball will fall to Diggy now in the back line, who will look to just kind of clip it over. Yeah, Jake kind of nowhere near his man there and too, too easy for them to kind of flick that ball back to the goalkeeper. We've not really had any won any first balls and then obviously if you're not going to win the first one you're not even going to give yourself the opportunity to win the second one George Cantrell wins the ball back in midfield gives it to Dwayne Wiley who's going to go all the way home to George Willis who takes a touch this time and looks to ping it long again it goes over the head of Jake Dane and two men marking him but it'll come for Burton who clears Wiley hooks it back forward and Newell will head it towards Williams who will quite calmly well, good movement off the ball to kind of faint his body and come away with the ball with plenty of time as Jake Day gambled. <laughs> Burton using his body to keep possession. Chester once again just kind of sitting with the ball on the edge of their own half, near the halfway line. Playing the ball goes down Tullet, the line makes from a great Nathan run down Woodfall the line. and tell it puts it across the oh. area. Piers was there, yeah. he couldn't get the touch to yeah. put it into the back of the net and yeah. it comes all the way across and I'll, and I'll have a throw in. They almost had us kind of static there and we were kind of waiting for them to make their move and the first quick movement was from Tollett who darted and made that long run and was kind of untracked because no one yeah. else on the pitch was moving. I mean you, you watched him run from right in the centre, he was around about 20 yards yeah. without anyone picking up that run, I'm sure yeah. Billy Heath won't be happy And the ball across the box that. was actually really good. Um, no one, no one on the end of it, but we won't grumble. Jordan Doolis looking to back up his body into Williams, but Williams will get it clear, but only to Claxton, who will find Billy Fuster, who looks to go back to Clacky, but with pressure on him from Woodthorpe, he slips and the ball goes out for a throw-in. Chester definitely dominating the early stages of the half keeping the ball but Billy will like to see the ball played into the area a bit more for Alfred Jake Day gets the flick on but it'll go through to Williams it looked like Fuster was going to break through and Cantrell plays the ball towards uh, Jordan Thewlis who can't quite get there ahead of Harrison Burke good foot race that was yeah Burke kind of coming out on top and getting his body between the ball and the man Newell heads it back forward and I think this is where we're struggling in the early stages of this half the ball's going forward and we're not winning that initial battle and it's just allowing Chester to come forward again as Burton plays the ball into Glendon who side puts a shot towards goal but George Willis will have no problems just claiming that into his grasp yeah throughout the season generally when we've played with the one up top and then the, the wide players we, we've really suffered with Kind of even if we win the first ball, there's no one anywhere any, anywhere to put the flick on up. So uh, unfortunately, it's not working out for us at the minute. Ball in the air and Diggy will head it forward again. And I think Billy's now saying, get the ball in the wider areas. We're going through the middle and it's just coming back every single time. We need to play in the corners in the channels if we're going to see any joy because Chester in the early stages of this game are just sending everything we're putting forward back as Jake Day battles and he does well to flick it on but Williams can easily just punt it clear while he'll head it back forward but Thomas can head forward again and Piers is fouled by Dwayne Wiley and Chester will have a free kick just inside the Alfred and half Kevin Roberts stands over it but Leaves it in the end for Declan Weeks. That's all for and set up. Prepared for the ball to come long from Weeks. Chester overload in the left hand side. Five plays over there. <coughs> the ball comes in from Weeks, but over hitting all the way through to. George Willis who just comes and claims it P 
patiently waiting for Jake Day to get back up through the middle. It's sent, and once again, Williams will have no problem just knocking that back towards Alfreton. Pressure from Piers, but he's come from an offside position, and Alfreton will have a free kick just inside their own half that George Willis will stroll forward to take. Plenty of Alfred and bodies forward. Only Cantrell and Josh Claxton remain back for the free kick. Willis knocks it up towards Ken Diggy, who brings it down, strike from Lund into oh. a Chester body and really <laughs> neatly and composed Weeks heads the ball back to his goalkeeper there. He but could have snatched at a clearance, mm -hmm. but that was a... Yeah, really clever. That was probably the first bit of joy we've had is... The ball kind of fell to Ken Diggy's feet and then he got a touch into the Adam Lund who got a shot away oh, but blocked. Jordan Fulis now making his way up against Harrison Burke on the left-hand side. Looks to go down the line. Burke gets a touch on it and Fulis lets it go out for a corner. Billy Fuster will make his way over to take it. Claxton and Newell will remain back. Billy Heath backs instructions at Joshua Claxton. London Cantrell hanging on the edge. The rest of the players crowd in the six yard area around the goalkeeper, Thewlis, Wiley. Newell coming short. It goes short from Houston. Newell strike into the area. Oh. It was hard and low, never really in any danger of. No, it needed to come off the ground there. There was too many bodies in the way. Oh, oh, Claxton, Claxton does really well to get round Burton. It comes into the area towards Wiley. It's a great, great save, save from Will Stanway. A cracking ball into the area from Joshua Claxton and Dwayne Wiley was up highest. Will Stanway matches it with a strong left hand to get it over the bar. As that play happened, Brackley double their lead over Tamworth to 2-0 and Milton Keynes take the lead against Notts County. No comment. Quinton begrudgingly pressing the button to add a score on. For MK. The ball comes in from Fuster. It's towards Lund at the back post. Diggy heads it up and Will Stanway comes and collects dominantly in his area. And he throws the ball out quickly towards Tollett, yeah. who's up against Newell. He cuts inside. Piers is up him. He, he comes, he looks to get the ball out to the wide area, but can only find Billy Fuster, who looks for Day down the channel. And Burton will let the ball run through to Williams who goes all the way back to Stanway and it looks like Alfreton have come oh, to play it's short. Oh, Jake, it's oh, oh, Jake Day can't quite get the ball under control I was checking the scores, I didn't quite see what happened but a misplaced pass ended up at the feet of Jake Day Burton does win it back though for Chester Billy Heath will be happy with that, I think the case of Getting the ball up the pitch, securing it, and then get, being able to play wide and into into the into the box well. Yeah, in the in the kind of first 15 minutes, just under 15 minutes, it looked like Chester were gonna kind of dominate the ball, and um, and they were, they were really getting the joy, and it looked like everything we were serving up, they were just knocking it back, and those kind of two chances from Lund, and then that one from Wiley, it'll give the boys a lot of much needed confidence as Farsley Celtic take the lead against Spenny Moore. Wow. Have the, are the wheels coming off the bus? <laughs> the, obviously Spenny Moore defeated 3-0 by Charlie who are a very good side up in the playoffs as well. Was it sorry? My, my, my mistake. Sorry Darlington would beat 3-0 by Charlie but it was um, yes yeah, sorry yeah you, you are right Power from me that. Two, two, two nil to against Stanford. Yeah, I said that. All for another throw in now. It's not quite in prime time Adam Lund range, but he is going to throw it into the area. Just the lads can't crowd around the six yard box. It's going to have to be flicked on, and it comes in. Diggy challenges. It comes to Waldock on the edge, who 
had a look, but he's going to go back out wide to Lund, who looks to whip it in and blocked by Glendon. George Tarlow, that's, that's his third guest, third straight game, he's scored a goal in. Well, Adam Lund looking to launch one into the area, it comes, headed away by Woodthup. Back in by Adam Lund, it's not a bad delivery, just no one kind of around that penalty area and Newell look to put it forward but he's kind of put it straight up but Cantrell wins it Ooh. and it's cleared away from Burton. and Newell does well Comes with Piers. Comes off the back of his head as he's running backwards. Weeks travelling forward, Wiley tracking back. Tollett to Weeks is right, he comes inside and oh really good from Liam Waldock wins it it's sent forward by Newell Williams does well to get in front of Jake Day and it's knocked over the top by Kevin Roberts but no one chasing and George Willis is going to have time to take a touch and then pick up the ball Kings Lynn 3 Scarborough nil. as the Sea Dogs continue to fall in spectacular fashion he just needs him to my class. now for Chester comes inside to Glendon Weeks spreads it out to Thomas on the halfway line Chester with some neat passage of play to, the ball ends up back with Thomas on the right hand side who looks to get round near for Newell and he's made himself a yard but he's going to come back with Tollett in support Ken Diggy steps in and puts in a really strong challenge Chester will have a throw in now in a good area if it would be a good area for us to have a throw in I'll say that but Burke will take the throw in and I'm sure they'll look to find someone's feet and the it goes back to Burke who looks to head it inside and Newell kind of looked to poke it away it comes off Piers and goes out for an offer and goal kick I think George Willis is absolutely relishing taking every moment he can with all of the Chester fans behind the goal. He's going to be asked to hurry up. I don't think it'll be a booking, but it'll be his last warning. We are on 23 minutes played. Oh, it is a booking. Oh, it's a booking. It's a very early booking. 24 minutes. 24 minutes played. Well, he was once dubbed the Pele of time wasting. He does eventually take the goal kick and it's won by Day, won by London, then won by Day again for Alfred and a keep possession. Problem being now though, that does really restrict the way he's going to be able to slow the game down if we do need to slow the game down if we're leading. We're at 0-0, we've got no real reason to be slowing the game down. Um, and I'm not saying it's how we want to do it, but 89 minutes, 90 minutes played, we want to slow the game down a little bit. We don't want to have to see him sent off, or he seems to be playing it quickly, doesn't he? Well, we've seen it a few times this season, it's season the time where in waste didn't come to bite us. Late on, you think about Hereford away, Scunthorpe away, those late goals. Obviously, two drop points at Hereford and a drop point at Scunthorpe. You think maybe if we'd uh, wasted less time during the game, there'd be less added on and that doesn't happen but sometimes that's just the way it works as Chester win a corner over from the left side it'll be an in-swinger right footed the ball comes in it's pretty low and Jake Day can deal with that easily out to Glendon who looks to head it back in Newell looks to clear he kind of slices it but it gives Thewlis the chance to give chase as Weeks brings it down and turns he comes in into Pe Piers who look to play it in behind when Wiley wins it and Chester get an advantage as what I thought Wiley had fouled Piers but the referee plays on out to Roberts gives it back to Burr who comes inside into Woodthorpe 
out on the far side now for Chester, who I think it's Tollett, looks to make himself a yard on the edge of the area. He makes it, he gets a shot away, but it's blocked. Dulis looks to clear. Only as far as Wheat. We'll go back to Williams, who looks to drive forward from centre half. He travels. Yep. Newell yep. does well to step up and intercept it. Chester will have a throw in. A strong phase of play from Chester. Burke now goes inside to Thomas. Chester playing around the edge of the Alfred and Penalty area and Newell does well to win it back and he kind of falls over. Weak sends a diagonal ball over to Woodthorpe but it's over hit and it'll, it looked like Newell had done well to kind of poke it away but he then kind of just fell on top of the ball and Chester won the ball back. Lund's down and Ollie's going to come on to the nurse's injury. Or he's ready to anyway. <coughs> yeah, he's asked for him on. Yeah. He's across quickly. Chester Boo. We've just been talking this week about how many games Adam Lund has played in a row. He's definitely played every single game this started every single game this season. I'm not sure on the exact number, but we wouldn't want to see him go off here. Still being treated as the teams take a little drink break. What's the Borough score? No, no. Oh, Sam Greenwood has been booked. I thought you were saying that like I'd missed a goal and I was about yeah. to look down and we were getting beat. Well, Adam Lund is making his way off the pitch. And we talked about the attacking options on the bench. This is a defensive midfielder, yes. which leaves basically the only defensive option is Harry Perrett. Which we, I would be surprised if we were to see him introduced 28 minutes in. Oh, he's, we thought he'd be out for the rest of the season, but he's made a speedy recovery and he's back in the squad today. But whether he's ready is another story. Lundy does come back onto the pitch. Jake Day fouls Burton and Chester will have a free kick inside their own half. It's rolled out to Weeks, who takes it quickly. And Chester once again comfortable in possession inside their own half as. the ball around Tollett lays it off for Weeks and Weeks is really pulling the strings here for Chester kind of dropping in deep and spreading the ball out into the wide areas into Thomas sorry not Thomas that's uh, Roberts Weeks once again laying the ball off as Roberts plays it forward into Burton who looks down for Woodthorpe who's making his way into the corner Billy, Billy Fuster stands him up now Clacky will look to track Tollett into Glendon. Back to Tollett and Roberts finds himself in space on the edge of the area and he'll shoot and Lund throws his body in the way and blocks the effort from range. The ball falls for Weeks, he'll strike oh, and awesome. George Willis down quickly to get two strong palms onto it and keeps hold of it. Well, doesn't he kind of fumbles away from him, but he just stands up and picks it up again. It's a great kick from Willis. It's going to kind of test the back line and Chester do well to deal with it, but it only comes to Newell, who is struggling to make contact with the ball in this first half. Thomas oh. kind of oh. looks to clear it, but causes problems for his defenders. And Lund heads it in. Jake Day in the area, who looks to put it in. Weeks now plays it out. Tollett back to Weeks. 
who looks to clip it over the top. It's uh, George Cantrell comes away with it. Lundy. There's two after the ball there from Chester. Yeah. Nothing done about it. The referee just missed it. Clacky with a chance to put it Jake Hel into Jake the Dagan area. Held. Over hit. Thomas will head it away. Jim Wiley looking to carry it out. He's got a Chester man on his back and he does get the free click as Glendon was a bit too handsy with him. There's once again a, a little glance at the scores, but nothing to report on just yet. Willis plays the ball out to Nathan Newell. He's got bags of space out on the side. He looks to whip it into the box. Nearly falls for Waldock, but it's cleared away and Weeks will hook it, it back up to Dwayne Wiley, who will go all the way home. Piers relentlessly chasing the ball down as forces Willis to take it quicker than he probably would have liked. Ken okay. Diggy, Waldock will calmly give the ball back to Claxton, who could go forward. He gives it back to Waldock. Clacky, it's high. But Stanway will deal with that pretty comfortably. He plays it quick. Burke will chase. He keeps it in. He's up against George Cantrell. Down the line to Weeks. He's got Ken Diggy on his back and Ken Diggy pokes it out. Chesterfield have equalised. 1-1 one, one there against Kidderminster. Burke throws down the line towards Piers who looks to spin him behind Dwayne Wiley who looks to use his body to get the better of him and oh, Dwayne Wiley with a there little nutmeg and then buys himself a free kick as he comes away I'm trying to fix my glasses because they're not going on much screw it bear with That's better. George Rogers once again just taking his time. Playing a dangerous game. Well, I suppose the penalty of time wasting wood. Yeah, it's. I don't know. <laughs> I'm lost for words from it, to be honest. Jay Day wins the first flick on, but no one's able to get on the end of it, and it rolls through to the keeper. Quick off his line. What you like to see from a goalkeeper as a defender as well when you can kind of let the ball go over your head and know your goalkeeper is going to be there to deal with it he sends it long but only to Dwayne Wiley who heads it up Weeks looks to put it back down the centre but Diggy was up highest and Adam Lund is fouled by Weeks what, you see, what we seem to see a lot this season is obviously we play a certain style of football and the clubs that kind of try and play as our own game the ones that struggle like we see in South Shield that's not their it's not their game it's not their game and still we come here and try and play as our game when you're not going to beat as our game so you might as well just play your own stuff and they started like that but they seem to have got themselves dragged into a bit of a battle which obviously obviously suits us again apologies if you can hear some profanity profanity coming through the headphones it's, we are in amongst it here in the Chester end Flicks on. Pairs in behind. Newell's there to put pressure on. Pairs will strike, but Willis gets down to collect. Willis has done what he's had to, not done anything spectacular yet. Unlike Friday, I mean, that save in the second half is. is it, well, first half. That's sorry. what wins you three points. That's, yeah, like, man of the match without a doubt on, on Friday. It was brilliant. Fast chain to the channel and. Stanway comes out quickly and just kind of puts the ball out for a throw-in, which to most would be acceptable, but with an Adam Lundlong throw imminent now, probably not the most ideal thing to happen. I was feeling a bit under the, under the weather last night, so I had some nightmares, but it's bugged me up and I feel horrific now. Charlie taking the lead against Blythe. No, 
I seem to get ill for ages and then just not have anything for ages. It's like makes me immune for a while. Lund launches it in. Ken Diggy was up, but it comes off a chest ahead and it looked like Stanway had collected, but the assistant linesman raises his flag and says that the ball had gone out and Alfred will have a corner. Well, you know the drill. Billy Fuster will take. Claxton New will stay back. Waldock and Cantrell on the edge. This time, not crowding around the goalkeeper. A crowd on the penalty area. Claxton makes a run forward. The ball will come in from Billy Fuster, and it's, it was fizzed across, but flicked on really nicely. I believe it was Burke who flicked it on at the moment where it looked like Adam Lund had just peeled off his man and was going to get a header towards goal, but instead it's flicked on and... Oliver will be able to put the ball back into the area with a throw in. Tollett, the only man forward for the hosts. Come short. Yeah. Billy Fuster gives it back to Lund, who Great looks ball. to whip it in and oh, looked like it was falling for Fulis, but it's put back in by Waldock. Fuster brings it down, puts it around the corner for Lund, who puts it across the area. Kennedy yeah, Diggy turns Kennedy it into the goal. goal. Alfred and Alfred and take the lead through Brilliant. Kennedy Diggy. That's his sixth goal of the season. With well, less than 10 to play in the half. A set piece play from the throw in, feet and back between London Fuster. Waldock with a clever flick back over to Fuster, who have puts. To, have put to say that has been coming. Have to say that's been coming. They started brighter, but definitely we grew into the game. Billy's had words throughout, and that, that's been coming, and probably deserved now. Yeah, a really, a really good flick in behind from Fuster into Adam Lund, who put an even better ball across the area. And Ken Diggy pounced. Bill next to me has correctly said, <laughs> taken very well. Didn't snatch it here. Took his opportunity and uh, wheeled away for six this season. Six this season from a centre half. I must add, Kennedy Diggy had a bit of a pop at us on social media this week because he wasn't in the, he wasn't in the, uh, <laughs> he wasn't in the man of the match poll for the game on Friday. On Friday. Who crossed it? Uh, who Lund crossed it? Lund. Oh, yeah, of course so. Just making sure everyone's got the correct information. Yeah. Now it's going to be a long afternoon for Chester if they don't reply quickly because we tend to make these games um, awful to play, and especially when you're trailing. Yep. Got about seven minutes to play of normal time plus stoppages. George Will is already booked for time wasting. Yeah. It's the earliest we've said that. But he's not. I don't, has he been booked for time wasting this year? Probably once. But what my the issue I have with it now is you're almost setting like the referee's already got it in his head now before the game's even kicked off. Yeah, and we've almost Burke ended up with a reputation down. for it. Burke just pushes down Fulis and Alfred another free kick in a a decent area for Newell to kind of float one into the area. Yeah, I don't think he'll whip it from this area. He kind of needs to come high and floated. Oh, but not, hang on, Newell's been sent back. Billy Fuster's going to take. So it's going to be swinging into the area rather than away. It's been very quiet. <laughs> Fuster's going to look to get this into a dangerous area into an area of uncertainty that's great ball. and that's what he does and it comes down for Fulis oh. who strikes but it's headed away it's it bad. looked like it could have been curling in but Kevin Roberts was there to head away not quite on the line but another opportunity for Alverton and a corner now Billy Fuster will take but yeah it fell to Jordan Fulis there and you would have liked to see it um, curl into the far corner it, could, it was making its way over I'm not sure if it was going to be on target in the end, but Billy Fuster, apparently take the corner. He puts it in. It was right into that kind of sweet area, but no Alfred and man there to to do anything with it. George, George Willis does. Brilliant. George Cantrell does really well. I don't know why I said George Willis. <laughs> Fuster now up against Weeks, who cuts in on his right foot. 
who Ooh, strikes spikes. one, but it's high and up and away. As Middlesbrough take the lead against Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Get in. Well, it's all going well. It's all going well so far. It is going very well so far. Leicester win. Borough are winning. Oldford are winning. Well. How Derby can't win today. Derby can't win today. <laughs> Stanway goes towards the corner, but it'll go all the way through and out as Burke kind of trips over Lund, who I think I don't think it's uh, I think Burke's kind of got up and got on with it, there. and it's a tangle. There's nothing intentional in there. Lund's kind of got a bit of a stamp on him, but. Nothing that should be too serious. He just um Chester fan shouts, where did you get him from, Billy Heath Drama School? <laughs> it's a throw in. Four all for as the goalkeeper's long kick went all the way through. We're just waiting for Adam Lund to uh get back up after I mean, that one's a, he's taking the mick a bit there. He's travelled about 10 yards up the line before taking the throw-in. And it'll be another throw-in. Billy, having a few kick-ups. <laughs> <laughs> before getting booed. Don't think it'll bother him too much. No. Bishop Stortford take the lead against Banbury. Oh, my God. Wow. Are they actually going to win a game, Bishop Stortford? Don't be daft. <laughs> Who scored for Borough? <laughs> it's an own goal. <laughs> Can't find where Bishop Stortford are, anyway. There we go. You can remind your viewers or listeners this afternoon that Chester lost to Bishop Stortford on the opening of the season. They could probably hear, hear that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so it was, uh, Chester beaten by Bishop Stortford on the opening day of the season. Cantrell puts it over the top and Jordan Thewlis looked like he was in behind but really good defending from Kieran Burton to get across and put it out of play. Oliver will have a throw in. And it's one of those ones where you're looking behind and you think that was a good chance and you, you, it's a shame to see it go out but then you remember we have a long throw in and it's just as good. Adam Lund throws it into the area, comes to Liam Waldock on the edge who pokes it back for Clacky who whips it in viciously but it's just over the head of Billy Fuster who was kind of trying to move back for it but he was too busy coming forward to get in the area and couldn't sort his feet out and the ball goes over his head. Well about a minute to play before we see the referee uh, the stoppage time board go up long from Stanway up towards Thomas but See Adam Lund challenges and it comes to Dwayne Wiley who hooks it clear Two. Jake Day looks to use his body against Williams but it drops and Williams can go home two of your own players battling for the ball it always gets a boot doesn't it Lund goes in the challenge, Harrison Burke goes Lund. down. It was a 50-50, they've both gone for the ball, he's come off worse, and there's a big horrible cheer, a cheer from the Chester fans. Without a ground full of without a ground full of fans. I think he's just taken I think Lund has gone in, he's coming fast and caught Burke with an elbow. Definitely a foul, but Good to see the referee not kind of rise to the crowd's reaction and put him in the book. Especially he didn't book Waldock early. I think there's two on a, a different referee on a different day. Probably we've had got three. We've probably got three bookings. Three yeah. minutes added on, which we're into, as you can see on the screen, because the clock's correct. Chester attack breaks down. Waldock sets for Cantrell, who smashes up. Jake chases. A little bit off that. He might have had a chance. Gets a bit of a push from the goalkeeper. 
I think the goalkeeper's helped him out more than anything <laughs> to get back in position. Any comments for us to pick up? Oh, I had a look uh, about 15 minutes ago and there wasn't. Steve Cottrell's... How many away fans are there, lads? Um, 100. Generous. 80. Unless, unless some of them are in the bar. We'll say 120 in the bar. <laughs> well, we've got, what, we've got 30 in here. We have got 30 in here. Steve Cottrell's 2-0 uh, <laughs> can't come in. I hope he didn't put any money on it. He wanted one. 2-0 to Charlie against Blythe. It's going to be a battle between uh, Charlie and Brackley, isn't it, for that kind of uh, buy in the playoff. Williams now on the ball. Chester still persisting with the, p the patient play. Which can sometimes be a good thing and sometimes be a bad thing when you, you know, it was definitely working before we kind of came to life and had a spell. So yeah, persisting could see it work, but it could just see a deadlock, which yeah. we wouldn't mind. Clean sheet and we leave with a win now. That's how I look at it. As the halftime whistles blow around a few of the grounds. Not ours yet, though. One minute to play of the added three. <laughs> into Weeks. Kennedy Diggy putting pressure on and Weeks comes back and comes away with the ball and is looking to find a, a man in blue. He whips it in towards Ooh, Thomas at the back Nathan but Newell, Newell does, does well really to well. use his body. Nathan Newell does brilliantly. Shepard. He kind of keep, keeps keeps his body between the ball and the player because if he kind of lets that man creep off his shoulder it's an easy tap in at the back post and Nathan Newell does really well. Billy Bit Heath screaming across the pitch to kind of congratulate him and tell him that's exactly what he wanted from him. Yep. Goal kick now. Willis is going to try and send this long, which hopefully it'll be the last action of the half. The referee checks his watch. Notts County has scored. Get in. Willis goes long, headed back by Weeks. Wiley looks to win it, but it nearly drops for Piers, but Newell can head it all the way back to Willis, and that is half-time here in Chester well it was a it was a blue start for Alfreton as Chester came out the stronger side looking to be patient and persistent on the ball but Alfreton had a spell with chances falling for Lund and another one falling for Dwayne Wiley but it was ultimately Ken Diggy who put the visitors into the lead after Lund put a great ball across the box after a, a nice flicking behind from Billy Fuster since then it's been a pr pretty much a war of attrition as Alfred and look to see the way into half time. But it's 1 0 as things stand. And just before half time, Buxton have gone ahead against Hereford, which is good for us. But before we go for our half time break, I will take you through the scores around the ground. So, not in the National League North, but games of interest and local sides to us. Middlesbrough lead Sheffield Wednesday at 1 0. Notts County and Milton Keynes are deadlocked at 1 1. Chesterfield and Kidderminster are at 1 1. And as we go into the National League North, Bishop Stortford lead Banbury 1-0. Brackley Town are two up against league leaders Tamworth. Charlie are two up against Blythe. Curzon Ashton are 1-0 up against South Shield in what is a huge game for the playoffs. Hereford trail 1-0 to Buxton. Kings Lynn are three up against Scarborough Athletic. Peterborough Sports and Gloucester are at 0-0. Rush Hall Olympic lead Boston United. Southport and Scunthorpe are level. Spennymoor and Farsley are 1-1 as Spennymoor equalised late onto the half. And Warrington and Darlington are also deadlocked at 0-0. We are going to take a short break now for the half-time break, but we will be back for the second half. So thank you all for listening to this first half commentary, and we will see you in the second half here in Chester.
Uh, Hello, we're welcome back, back <laughs> to the Alpha in Town official watch along here in Chester. We lead 1 0 at the break. And if you were wondering what my look of disgust was just before we come back on uh, air, it was Quinton's pronunciation of uh, Mask United was mask, and I, I, I'm fuming. Um, it's, uh, no changes at half time for either side, from what we can see. No. No subs, from what we can see. Just had a look over the club's Twitter and the timer, majority. Timer, timer, timer. That is the first time this year I've started the timer for both the first half and the second half. With a bit of help. With a bit of help. <laughs> I had got it ready though. Um, Chester fans really unhappy over social media. We've seen. Yeah, not, not, not pleased uh, to be trailing 1 0. You wouldn't be though. No, players playing out of position, they're saying season over sat a lot of them so we've got a team here that Weeks looks over the top though and it's nearly brought down by Piers who seem to have gotten away the flag stayed down Dwayne Wiley and Kennedy Diggy look over to the linesman and ask him where his flag was that could have been really dangerous if Piers had got that under control but he didn't Willis takes it quickly so Fuster jumps and but Williams manages to flick it back to Stanway in his goal. And he goes long with a kick out of his hands and Dwayne Wiley wins the header but can only put it out for a throw in. Chester throw it in quick. Thomas with two yellow men on him. Dulis looks to clear, but it comes off a Chester man, and that'll be a throw in for Alfredon, and Adam Lund will make his way over to throw it as far down the line as possible and re relieve as much pressure as possible. Who do you expect to see off the bench today, Matty? I think we'll see Brian Taylor off the bench. Um, because I'm assuming if Jez isn't starting he's still not fit because he's, I think we've liked that two up front system yep. with Jez and Dare but Jez has been warming up I, I'm sure we'll see Salmon for Thewlis yep. it's almost um, a guaranteed uh, and honestly I don't see I, I, I only see Billy making two moves in this game yep. problem um, being really that at the most you, we're talking there about Jerry McDonough not being 100% and we're also looking at Harry Perrett who we know is probably not even 25% fit, 50% fit. So we are on string and bones at the minute. We are running on fumes. Um, so there's not too much to look at on the bench. I mean, you can tell we are running on last legs and bare boards by the fact that we fielded the exact same 11 that played just three days ago yep. on Friday. That's the position we're in. Billy won't be grumbling about it. The players out there have got the ability. The players out there, we're it realistically, I'm not too sure on the exact number, but the number of players in which we've used this year is really low. From the start of the season, we've probably we've bought in none of these players throughout the season, apart from Jerry Madonna, we're still playing with the same side as we break quickly. Fuster into the area, up against... Woodthorpe, who is unable to keep it in, it's put in and corner. Sorry, Stanwyck. I spoke over there. <laughs> it's all right. We've got corner for Alfred, and as the cross came in from Fuster, Stanway got his hands on it to try and catch it, couldn't keep hold of it, and it bounces out for a corner. I quite like this tactic we seem to be going for, where we're keeping Newell and Claxton back. Whichever side it is on, who is, is generally making that, that shorter run, it looks like it'll probably be Claxton here with the right foot, I imagine. Yeah. And well, he oh. hangs back. He, he now, went to probably now, probably now we're in a winning position. They're probably not looking to to do it, but it was dragging that extra man back and comes in from Fuster to Cantrill. Oh, oh, it comes off the woodwork, and that was nearly two. So so Fuster close from George Cantrill. Oh, the linesman gives a foul, but Fuster's 
had an unopposed chance to get the ball into the box there. I've got no idea why he's blowing the whistle. Billy Heath with his head in his hands. The ball came to the back post from the corner for George Cantrell, who met it with a volley first time with the side of his foot in it. Came back off the crossbar. The referee can ignore the Ninesman's flag there, but for, he can let him put that ball in. <laughs> so, so tight. Nearly a two goal cushion there for Alfred. Flicked on into the area. It's going to fall to Billy Fuster, who strikes, and Stanway gets down. Palms it out for another corner. It's a very strong start to this second half for Alfred. Chester look like they're about to be making their first sub. Billy Fuster once again over the corner. Cantrell hanging on the edge of the area. We wouldn't mind him having another pop at one of them. Uh, free volley, eight yards out. Claxon does make the short run to the edge of the area, drags Tollett back. Chester have no one forward. Ooh. It does come out Tollett. He does get there, but he'd have a long way to go. And Cantrell brings him down tactically. He's going to make his way into the referee's book. As Scarborough claw one back. 51. Cantrell, I believe, 51. Cantrell book 51. Kidderminster retake the lead at Chesterfield. 2-1 for, for them now. That, that'll be a big win for Kidderminster, who are right down the bottom end of the National League table. And we see the first move of the game as Joel Taylor comes onto the pitch for Nathan Woodthor. It's like a like-for-like -like change out on the kind of wide area. Kind of like that wing-back roll. But he seems to be playing right on the shoulder of Billy Fuster and the Burton's brought down by Jake Deer. Roberts takes it quickly. Chester staying patient with the ball. Alfred and pressing quite high and Chester are forced to go down the channel and Dwayne Wiley has time to take a touch and knock it down the line but he knocks it out for a throw in as Darlington take the lead against Warrington the great escape it's back it had a week off but it's back as County take a 2-1 lead against MK it's all coming in today from touch wood looks to go down the line and Piers looks to battle with Diggy, but Diggy does what he can, and Jake Day does excellently to get the ball to Adam Lund, who goes all the way out wide to Newell, who looks to put it forward. Williams heads it into Roberts, and Chester once again come forward. <coughs> the longer this game goes on at 1-0, the more angry these fans are getting around, in and around us, which is not an atmosphere to, to ch kind of change the way the game's going so good news for us right. Tollett plays the ball out to Burton Taylor playing really high since coming on Claxton almost switching roles there with, with Fuster playing yeah I think Claxton's watching inside and that's a great sliding challenge from George Cantrell to knock it out for a corner a ball searching in behind the back line Cantrell did what he can now, last time Chester had a corner, it failed to beat Jake Day at the front post. They'll be hoping for a better delivery this time round. Comes in, deep, away, onto the edge of the area. Weeks heads it straight up into the air. Lund can head it away. Thewlis is going to give chase to Williams. Taylor on possession now on the halfway line wants to carry it forward spreads it out wide to Tollett up against Billy Fuster who shows him in size played into Weeks who's going to spread it all the way out to Harrison Burke oh. on the right but he can't it wasn't quite even get a bad the ball there. under control no that's um, it was just it just seemed to not really get start running yeah that's um, lackadaisical is that is a, that's a good word that, yeah. Yeah. wouldn't think I'd know something like that from T side. <laughs> We just mentioned our attendance here today was what, 2,500 and, what was it Liam? Oh, he's doing it now, 2,537. 
Uh, that was actually really good timing, that wasn't it? <laughs> I, I think I thought I'll mention the attendance while we're waiting. I forget what it is, and I look down, and Liam's putting the tweet out for it. One thing we can mention whilst we're waiting as the ball looks to go off. Well done. One day, goal kick. The ball goes off for a goal kick for Willis. Next thing we will mention is our next fixture is at home on Saturday to Curzon Ashton. Another big battle. They're, they're coming thick and fast. Our, our running is really tough. Relentless, yeah. Um, a lot of the teams that we play in the last kind of seven or eight is teams that we have not didn't beat in the first round. We were looking at a kind of... We looked at Brackley with the first team to do the double over us, but every team we played for the rest of the season we hadn't actually beaten. So yeah, two one nils as game. well against Brackley. Oh, and can, uh, Claxton does really well to put pressure on the back of Tollett, and his touch goes out far of throwing. Yeah, and Cousin as well, obviously leading against South Shields. We'd like a draw there. Yeah. But if one was to win, it'd be Curzon. The ball comes in from Clacky and headed away, but Newell challenges Thomas and it's flicked forward again. Weeks looks to yeah, come away, but Fuster oh, wins really the ball back, pass. but he's massively overhit it. He's just taking it a bit too quick. Burton looks to travel forward and yeah I mean what they're doing now is Tollett's starting really high and then coming deep and Claxton's being dragged out all the way up, up the pitch Billy Fuse is having to do a lot of work going the other way yeah Billy, Billy Fuse's shape and his kind of oh that that's a nasty one he was not going to give it. he that. wasn't going to give it but the ref uh, uh, it was it was it was Fuse's body language and it's a foul yeah it was definitely, it was definitely a, foul. a foul the referee was <laughs> not going to give it it's definitely a foul but uh, I think kind of he wasn't going to give it and then the body language of everyone was so <laughs> sure it was a foul that he did then blow but what I was saying is Fuster has been really good in terms of his shape and kind of tracking and making sure Chester don't get joy in this wide area around the outside of Joshua Claxton we've seen when Clacky does get caught out he's not the fastest of full backs and when he's chasing it's like chasing shadows sometimes for him so having Fuster in support and keeping that shirt and being so disciplined for a young man as well mm. is really, really been what I think has been the difference in kind of transition. Mm. When Chester have looked to come forward, where they've been patient with the ball, it gives Fuster that time to get in and support. And Billy once said in one of his post match interviews that he'll ask more than any other winger, any other winger in the league, that his wingers have to do the most work. As Taylor comes down the left side against Billy Fuster, looking to make a chance the ball comes in headed away by Claxton Tollett now on the edge of the area who's going to look to try and make a yard against Lund gives it back to Taylor Fuster's out there back to Tollett Lund and Claxton inside Glendon pressured by Cantrell who's going to push him into the corner Cantrell does really well and he'll win a throw in excellent yes, work Billy. from George Cantrell Cheers. as Brackley celebrates that like a goal Brackley go 3-0 up against Tamworth Tamworth on the beach I've broken it Brackley are going to go again into the playoffs in some great form they've been brilliant from when we saw them flicked on away. by Dare 27 been a big battle between Burton and, and, and Day right throughout the game hasn't there obviously there's been a uh, kind of <laughs> locked for most of the game kind of days been struggling to get any, uh, get away from him it's been very physical between them both as we're approaching the hour mark Alfred lead 1-0 through Kennedy Diggy his sixth goal of the season not shied away from putting the ball in the back of the net as Ken <laughs> definitely got himself within a man of the match out today don't you worry Ken <laughs> And not because he asked. No, not because he asked, because he has played well. Everyone's played well so far. <laughs> Taylor goes back to Burton and Fuster puts pressure on and forces him all the way back. And Alfred have a chance to push further up the pitch. 
Billy Fuster forces Stanway to go along and Lund will have to try to bring that down. Hook it forward towards Jake Day who does flick it on but no one running behind and straight through to Stanway. Chester once again with the ball at the back and slowly making their way forward. Taylor goes around the corner. Billy Fuster's done really well to use his body to stop Taylor kind of bursting away down the flank. Oh, no, Clacky well well has been everywhere down this right hand side. He's obviously been asked to do a, do a job on, on his man. Cantrell gets across against Burton and it's out. And it's been a really Chester good game. Throw in. They take it quick. Tollett, who's got a bit too much time for what I'd like to see. Well, Waldock gets out to him and he looks to make a yard and it's Plays played on Roberts and no. he pulls it back for the free kick it was definitely a foul Waldock just trying to step across Tollett who made a yard as Waldock stepped forward and was brought down by the midfielder Waldock earlier in the season dubbed as a non-league gem <laughs> who by? the league did you not see that post? Oh. Uh, some goal contributions said is Liam Waldock a non-league gem but I remember these things it's come from a pro club <laughs> I think he's a gem <laughs> <laughs> right, Kidderminster go 3-1 up Tollett has an effort Kiddy he tries Kiddy 3-2 yeah 3-1 sorry 3-1 to Kidderminster. Yeah. Sorry, I got, the score was on incorrectly. <laughs> Willis with a goal kick after the effort from the free kick went over the bar. Fuster wins the first. Waldock well, wins the second. Chester come away with it though. Claxton, he's yeah, he's done the right thing because Peters was ready to pounce if he went home there. He's just hooked it out and onto the roof of the stadium. New ball comes on as Taylor looks to... Uh, <laughs> hang on. If that was us, they wouldn't let us throw a new ball on. No. We'll wait for the old one to come back from <laughs> the park. This cold is really hitting me now. Really under the weather. <laughs> Get away. Sorry. Marlin and Chester once again just patiently coming forward. They're not they're not kind of getting impatient and sending balls over the top as the ball comes into Pierce who looks to make his way through and the ball comes out to Claxton on the edge who does well and Cantrell have chance to fine. Cantrell's just happy to hook it clear and kind of get set up again. I'm just taking another glance at the scores. Tollett looking to come down the left wing looks to go oh, to Taylor but another he, really the pass poor is pass behind again. him again gives us a chance to get on the ball get Clacky to take the throw in which he is doing it's not within his interest to run to the ball <laughs> get it throw it because Christian we're winning the game it's not in all like there's a difference between kind of time wasting and oh. flicked on by Fuster it's going to go all the way through to the goalkeeper though Jake Day is usually flicking them on he's not used to running on to the end of them <laughs> I don't think he was expecting Fuster to win it was he no I don't think he was expecting Clackett to keep it in with a <laughs> scissor kick volley down the line Burton out on the left Jake Day working really hard to get across Claxton here is I don't think I've ever seen him play this role he's a, it looks like he's man marking shades of Jisung Park number 8 Captain Glendon if he's playing centre back Clacky's playing centre forward as it stands <laughs> uh, Clacky definitely a three on Park performance from him to do that famous night against Juventus against <laughs> Pearl or that's that's what Clacky's like to do <laughs> and Curzon go 2-0 up against South Shields 
A blow for South Shields, definitely. Good. Although South Shields are very entertaining, it looks like Jerry Madonna's getting prepped getting ready. to come on. Yeah. It, I assume that'll be like for like for yeah, I'd like Jake Day. Jake Day has had a had a really solid game, not nothing stand out, but he's worked really hard. He's um a real workhorse up the top today, made everything difficult and he's got a cross and the way Chester have kind of patiently moved the ball around. Uh, I didn't think that was a free kick, but we'll take it. Yeah. Uh, the way the kind of Chester have patiently moved the ball around, Jake Day has kind of got worn himself out. Clacky asking for a drink. I think it's tied Newell makes it over for a drink. Couple of lads make the way over for a little refreshment. Did you hear the? Uh, sorry, I'll tell you in a minute when we. But after Billy Fuse, the whips this free kick in. All right. In the box it goes. Towards Kendigi! Oh, and it's it. is a second it's for a Kendigi. Kendigi brace and it's 2 0 for Seven for this season, a brace Kendigi for Kendigi. Scores. Get in! And there's a really nice cushion what? going into the last 25 yeah. minutes for Alfredton. Kendigi rose like a salmon and buried the header into the back of the net. Yeah! And Alfredton could be on their way to their first win at Chester in 10 years. And I think, I don't want to, I'm going to touch some wood. I think he's on his way for a Man of the Match nomination. Yeah. <laughs> don't put him on, it'll be brilliant. <laughs> There'll be absolute head loss if Ken Deegie's not nominated for Man of the Match. A second, 2-0 Alfreton. <laughs> Remember to update the score. Remember to update the score. Yep, sorry. Part time. Chester have a free kick and the fans here in Chester are growing more and more frustrated because this is not the performance they wanted to see from their side in such a big game as Christian Norton prepares to come on for the hosts. Yeah, great header. Yeah, and, and an excellent ball in from Billy Fuster. I mean, it's going to be a close one to call for the man of the match between Ken Dickey and Billy Fuster today. But luckily, they'll both be in the nominations. Yeah. It's a long way to go yet though, 25 to play. Fuster free kick. Glendon comes forward, down the line. Tollett looks to put the ball into the area. Straight through and out for a throw-in. As we will see the change now for the hosts. As Matty Williams comes off. I'm assuming, I don't know a lot about Christian Norton, but I'm assuming this is an attacking substitution. By the way, you, you need to tell me what I missed before the ball went into the area and we scored. You asked me if I heard some up. I said no, and you said you'd tell me after oh, the free yeah. kick. Have you heard the Nathan Newell chant that someone posted to us on Twitter? I haven't, no. I'll show you it. It's good. It's very good. <laughs> I won't be singing it. <laughs> I will not chant for anyone from Sunderland. If he keeps a clean sheet today, I'll sing it all the way home. <laughs> I'm not sitting next to you. <laughs> Cantrell hooks it forward. Jez, who was stripped and ready to come on. Put his coat back on. Put his coat back on. Oh, Clacky. Excellent. Another one, definitely, who's had a standout performance. As he whacks it back to their goalkeeper. No nonsense. 22 to play. We've been in this position and dropped points yet, though. Billy won't want to see us drop off. Yeah, well, we've seen it more than once this season. We've seen it against... Warrington. Warrington, Scunthorpe. Hereford. Not going to see it again. No, it's been an absolutely valiant performance. Peterborough Sports take the lead against Gloucester. Banbury equalised against Bishop Stortford. Oh, no, no. Who was the first one, sorry? Who was the first one? No, the first one was Peterborough Sports take the lead at Gloucester and MK equalised against County. Oh, that's County, a drawing two all. Well, I, I would have thought Jake Day would have made way for Jerry McDonough for the last 20 minutes with him working so hard. But look at him track back, Jake Day. He's followed Roberts all the way into centre half. As Billy Fuser does the chasing up the top end. and Taylor, with a bit of footwork, tries to make his way around. 
the side of Joshua Claxton and he keeps coming inside and he, he's, he's getting he's getting a bit too clever. I mean, when you're 2-0 down, you want to see your players putting the ball in the area and keeping possession, not trying daft flicks like that to give the ball away cheaply on the edge of the, the penalty area. Tollett now, just inside the Alfred half, looks for an outside the foot pass down the channel to Piers, who gets it back to Taylor. He's going to have a chance to put the ball into the area. He does, it's cleared away. away. Jez is fully stripped now. Well, not fully stripped. He's stripped. He's got his oh, kit on. He's, got, he's, he's in just his kit. Nothing unusual is happening <laughs> here in Chester. Well, Piers. it is, because we're winning for the first time in 10 years, as it stands. Taylor goes back to weeks. Alfred and shape and discipline has been absolutely exceptional this afternoon. Chester Clacky once again heads the ball away. Weeks keeps it in. Just inside the Alfred and half, he looks to go in. Waldock blocks. Dwayne Wiley gets in front. Lund looks to poke it through. Challenge from Lund. Challenge oh, from brilliant. Waldock. And Waldock it's comes forward. Waldock looks in behind for Jake Dane. He's just not got the pace to get there. Stanway off his line really, really well. Quick pace off his line and come down and got there before Jake Day could get there. But that must have, that sprinting behind there must have taken the last bit of energy Jake Day has. He's absolutely worked his socks off all afternoon. Taylor looking to get the run up against Billy Fuster. The cross comes in, but it's over, hit and over everyone. And Jordan oh, Thewlis with an excellent Fulis. touch to get form. away. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. And Thewlis looking to get away from Weeks and Weeks does win it back as Thewlis looked to just get as much distance on the ball as he could. A couple of quick one-twos and they seem yeah. to have broken quickly. Thomas looks to find substitute Norton, but it's intercepted by Newell, but Norton's won it back. Christian Norton travels all the way across. He's looked dangerous since he's come on. He looked tidy. Joel Taylor, who's going to look to try and get a ball into the box, but Joshua Claxon stands him up well. Tollett in support, he gets it. Fuster standing him up. He's looking to come into the area and he's got the ball through the legs of Claxton, but Fuster Jake has Day done what he's can and Jake Day is still grafting. Wow, Absolutely excellent Jake Day. Jake Day. Gets a clap. Uh, Jerry McDonough's been waiting to come on for about five minutes. The ball won't go out of play. I think Billy wanted Clacky to kick it out then. <laughs> Although it's fell quickly. The ball's fell for Jake Day. I don't, he has he's running going on fumes now. Yeah, he, he's, he, he's on. He's on empty. He's burnt out. He's absolutely given everything. And he's still, he's doing what he can. You can see the discomfort on his face. You can see how tired Jake is. Jerry McDonough has been on the side here for... There and we it's go. finally gone out. The Ben's toilet touch flicks up and goes out, and Jake Day is finally, <laughs> finally going to get a very well deserved rest. He, he's, he's already started taking his tape off. In the middle of the centre circle. In the circle. middle of the centre circle. He's probably going to take a booking on his way out for taking his time. He's walking. Billy's first sub. 73. 73 played. Jake Day makes way. Jerry Donner back on the pitch. Excellent from Jake, he's worked and worked. Bishop Stortford have retaken the lead against Banbury. Yes, get in there, Stortford. Clacky does throw the ball down the line towards Jez, who gets his first touch as a flick on towards the corner. Billy Fuster chases, but it's going to go out. Four. A goal kick for Chester. And there, this is what we need now. Jake Dade giving everything and Jerry McDonough's up there now and he's chasing the Chester defenders. And it's been, it really has been a job of chasing shadows as Chester move the ball around, but you've got to keep that pressure on yeah. and not let them move it round for free. Tollett pokes the ball past Claxton, but all the way through to George Willis, who's going to make him run all the way to the corner of his box uh, before he picks it up. But you, you've, you've had to you've had to chase shadows this afternoon because if you let yeah. Chester kind of play... They've played they've played relatively in front of us, though. They've not caused too many... I mean, the, the best effort probably came in the first five minutes, six yeah. minutes. 
Jez is facing that same battle that Jake Days has faced for the first 70 minutes now. But yeah, they've, they've, the majority of the stuff they've played has been in front of us. Um, I, I'm absolutely just living for Billy Heath here, by the way. Just yeah. the we are getting full front row access of, of, of Billy Heath. He's so pleased with his team. He's celebrating every tackle. Everything that happens, he is extremely pleased about. And he should be, rightfully so, because the boys are really, really... They, I mean, they had that... Chester really came out strong and had that spell where I thought that I wasn't too confident. Uh, but we, we got into the game and had that big chance with Dwayne Wiley, which was a forced a great save from uh, Stanway. As Buxton go two up against Hereford. Get in. Yeah, that Dwayne Wiley with that big first chance for us and really opened the game up got us playing and we've looked really good since then and we always say every week almost on the commentary that we will make a team know they've been in a game and we'll make them know they've been in a battle but this has been something else because the boys who are used to a battle have been in a war every every player so, far, so good every player in yellow has been in the trenches as the borough go 2 0 oh. get in Piers looked like he was in behind, but he's offside. Spenny will take the lead against Farsley. They've turned that around from 1-0 down. Yeah, every single player in yellow today who's taken that pitch has been in the trenches. It's been a 110% performance. Again, you should be able to hear Billy coming through the commentary. He's asking his players to do their jobs. They've only got to do their jobs for 14 minutes plus whatever's added. And to be honest, there's not been too many stoppages oh, in the second half. Great win from George Cantrell. Jez does what he can, and that will be an Alfred and Ball if it does go out. Oh, I think the, I think the Lionel's got that run. Looked like it'd come off a Chester man, but Chester will have a throw in right in the wrong corner, and Alfred are going to look to try and keep them there. The throw down the line, and Cantrell will rise and win it. Liam Waldock will win it. Cantrell into Jerry McDonough, into Fuster, who's just going to head towards the corner. He's going to put the ball across the area, only to Weeks. He looks down the line towards uh, substitute Christian Norton, but Newell does really Brilliant. well. Nathan Newell. He goes all the way back to Willis, who will clip the ball forward again towards Jez. Can't quite win the header, but does enough to force Chester back rather than forward. And it gets whacked out over here. Chester fans, big groan. They are not happy. This game is running away from them. Yeah, I mean, we're just getting these these moments from Chester where they're lazy. I mean, we'll see Chester's final substitution as number 20. I think that's Ewan Murray. Yep. I'd say uh, Ewan Murray comes on. I missed who did come off. Uh Came off for Piers, Tom Piers. Tom seven. Piers, well, Murray on. Piers off, he's very sharp, is Murray. Yep. Little, little man. But, yeah, what, what I've seen about Chester is they've looked calm on the ball and composed, but sometimes a bit too uh, uh, calm. That it looks lazy and they've passed the ball out and they've. That gets picked across. Oh! oh nearly, nearly a big opening for a third there to kill the game. Yeah. Jordan Thewlis nearly flicking it on to Waldock. I don't feel like we've mentioned Thewlis a lot today. He's uh, just kind of been tidy, done his job. The yeah. ball's not really come over that side. No, a lot of the game has been played down this we've, side. We've mentioned a lot about Billy Fuster and how well he's played, but it's literally because it has been relentless down this near side to us. It's been a really good game to watch. I'm glad we're on this side of the pitch. Yeah. The away fans have been Flicked miles on away. And Norton looks to get in behind, and he's made a guard, and he gets a, a thunderous strike away, but George Willis like a brick wall puts two strong palms up and palms it away and Clacky can put it into touch oh no oh that's really poor from us Lacks on the edge of the box to get their shot away and then they've taken a quick throw in on the far side and it's, we're not even getting across that is a let off to have not conceded for me for those two chances what were you looking for? Who, who had the shot? Norton had the shot 
Switch on Billy asks of his players. 79 played, 11 yep. to go. But the thing is, obviously, in those moments where the ball's come into the, the box and but, uh, Chester have had a, a, you know, that kind of moment where they have switched off and let Ken Diggy just kind of put two in the back of the net, uh, that we've not been punished for those moments. No. Because there definitely has been them. I mean, there was one five minutes into the game when Piers got in behind and Diggy yeah. kind of played it through for, it for him when he got the touch onto it and <coughs> they missed that chance. We've been let off and Chester haven't and I think that's what's the, the, been the main difference is that we've not given them the opportunity to make mistakes unpunished. Weeks comes forward, looks for Taylor, who plays a ball down the line. A bit of a tangle between Diggy and Norton, but it's a nothing ball from Taylor. And Tollett's going to have to chase all the way to the bottom of the pitch to make Willis pick the ball up, who is happy to bide his time. And Claxton's sitting in loads and loads of space, but Norton's made his way over. Willis knocks it long towards Billy Fuster, who is pushed in the back by Taylor, but not too hard so to warrant a foul. Diggy does well, gets the ball to Lund, who looks in behind for Jez, who tried to just touch it into the pass of Billy Fuster, but the ball with a bit too much pace on to control. Less than 10 minutes to play here, plus stoppage. Chester patiently still playing. I don't think it's a time for patient passing at the back. As they come forward, Murray looks to turn, but Newell's on him, and Lund will pick it up and go all the way home. Norton is going to sprint after Willis, who still has plenty of time to knock it long towards the corner, and Cantrell's going to chase Taylor, who's going to let the ball go out. Taking look, Hereford have got one back against Buxton. Two on there. Burton throws the ball down the line, but Fuster wins it, and Jerry McDonough's on side. He looked off, he's got. Me, but we're not going to moan. Looks to knock it down the line. Burton gets a foot in there. Wins a throw in. Clacky will take the throw in. One's not making his way over. I mean, you can see the kind of. The, the, the fatigue on the face faces around the pitch all Fritton players are absolutely goosed Clacky's going to kind of just throw that as far as he can into the box it's dropped, Jerry McDonough finds Jordan Doolis who swings a leg and he gets another oh. one and it comes off the woodwork once again all Fritton hit the woodwork for the second time this half so close for Jordan Doolis to extend his Goal scoring tally to 17 for the season. Oh, Billy Fuster challenges and does really well. Jerry McDonough gets it to Waldock. Fuster, great touch around the corner and he's going to head towards the corner. Kevin Roberts, it comes in just a bit too high for Jordan Thewlis, who was rising at the back post over his head out for a throw in. And not to speak too soon, but with seven minutes on the clock. We look like the team that's going to score next. Wow, it's... Cantrell chasing of the back. Taylor is still in pretty deep in his own half. Chester, comfortable in possession, but in their own half. Weeks plays it into Kevin Roberts. He's being chased. Murray drops it off for Weeks, who's travelling forward. Taylor looking to run in behind. Billy Fuster, excellent tracking Brilliant. and interception. Clears the ball up for Jerry McDonough, headed down by Harrison Burr. Murray back into Kevin Roberts. 
Tollett with plenty of space on the halfway line out on the left hand side he was looking to drive forward Billy Fuster standing him up the ball goes out for Taylor he puts the ball into the area it's up towards Norton at the back flicked away by and Burke heads it into the palms Harry Perry Willis who will drop down Harry Perrett who we thought was out for the season is up stretching and ready to make his return after injury I wouldn't be surprised if he came on for Clacky, who was Jason Parks all yeah. over the pitch he's not stopped running but then again I could also see him coming on with midfield because Adam Lund looks absolutely knackered as well uh, Darlington go 2-0 up referee uh, He's had a bit of a nightmare there because we've asked for a sub and he's not let us take it but when Billy Heath screams down the line at him he's looking at Billy and I think Ken makes a foul on the referee like, I it. thought we'd see like for like for Clacky and Perrett but it's actually Liam Waldock coming off for Harry Perrett well when Harry Perrett first came to the club that's kind of where he was predominantly playing in, in, in the front of that three in midfield yeah um Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. I, I thought, well done, I thought it'd be if, if, if that's Waldock's last last effort in the game. Well done to him because he wins the ball perfectly in the middle, plays it all the way home, all the way home, and it was a brilliant pass back. And that's going to go out, and we'll get the sub. Well, I thought it's even going to be like flight for Clacky doing that kind of or yeah. everywhere job, or it'd be energy in the midfield. But eighty-six, eighty-six minutes. Oh, Borough of Mr. Penalty. Borough of Mr. Penalty. Well, Liam Waldock comes off an excellent effort. He, he looks absolutely, <laughs> he's huffing and puffing. Chester have a throw in right inside their own half. I mean, not much time on the clock at all. Just less than four minutes to play. Welcome down down the line. It's flicked on from Tallit, but Dwayne Wiley can just go all the way back once again. And it goes down the line. Oh, Jez has done really Jez well. Jez up against Burton. He's being held. Doing what he can. Burton looks to turn, and Jez is putting all the work in. Just keeping Chester inside their own half, and Lund wins the header. Billy Fuster does excellently. Lund into Cantrill. I mean, we've seen us try and see out games from the half time up until. Game, isn't it? We've watched us try and see out games from half time until the end of the game at a 1 0 lead, but we have been absolutely relentless, keeping them in their own half, chasing everything. Um, and it's not been one of those games where it's like they've been pressuring us and looking like getting an equaliser. They have not looked like getting an equaliser for about half an hour. Since, since the second goal went in, I don't think they've looked like getting that equaliser. MK go 3-2 up against County and Warrington get one back against Darlow. Is it 1-1 one -one at Darlow? 2-1 to one Darlow. Darlow. Just with the ball on the halfway line again. Chester looks to come forward. Weeks gives it out to Burton on the left-hand side who looks to come past and Lund stands in his way and wins it back. He looks to come round. Burton does win a free kick. Tollett will stand over it. We'll probably whip it into the area from this position. Or he could go short to Glendon on the edge, but... I don't think at 2 0 down with two minutes on the clock, you'd want to see your team go short from a free kick from here. Well, the ball comes in, and Willis will come and claim it dominantly. And he drops down. He needs to be careful, Willis, because I don't think we're in any danger. He doesn't have to be asking for a second booking. I think he'll be fine as he strolls to the edge of his area preparing to send it up the pitch Notts County 2 Milton Keynes 3 yep 
refuse to challenges and does what he can and Weeks looks now down the line. Thomas will get there. Newell with him. Thomas looks to get round Newell. Newell does what he can. The cross does come in. It's flicked on from Clacky. Taylor puts the ball back in. Punched away from Willis to Weeks on the edge. Perrett chasing out into the wide area. Newell going to stand up against Thomas. The frost comes in, it's blocked by Newell and it'll be a corner. Late pressure. Yeah, we should see the stoppage time board up going any second with... Mm, it's got a four on it. It's, yeah. Well, it so far, it. it's got a four on it. <laughs> Scunthorpe have scored late on against Southport to take the lead. Harrison Burke heads the ball back across the box, headed away by Lund. Perrick going to chase. Norton goes back outside to Weeks, who puts in, headed away by Cantrell. Comes out to Fuster, who's just going to get rid of it. Billy barks at his team to get further up the pitch. Stanway's going to get it and take the throw in quickly. Still waiting for the board to go up for stoppage time. Four minutes will be added on. <laughs> That's a foul. It does look like Clacky's in some discomfort. Personally, it didn't look too bad to me. As he's tried to clear it, I think he's kicked through the standing It's leg. definitely hurt. He's hurt, yeah, there's no doubt he's hurt. Bishop Stortford extend the lead to 3-1 against Banbury. It already says 3-1 on the board. A bit of pushing and shoving. Clacky losing his head a little bit there. He's got to be careful. Roberts picks up a yellow card. Clacky's fuming. Needs to calm. Needs to get himself calmed down. Billy Fuse doing everything he can to calm him down. Come on, our Clacky, don't ruin it with two nil up. There's no need. He'll do well not to find his way into the book here, Clacky, because, uh, I mean, he's not going to. I know he was... Dwayne Marley's not happy about something. It's all taking up time as we do go into the added time. I'm sure they'll be added on the added now. That's Lewis Salmon enters play. Yeah, Jard's going to come off uh, Lewis Salmon for the final move. Bring Clacky off. 90 plus 2. Billy asking everybody to calm down for the last couple of minutes. Is it, I think because of what's happened this year, I still feel a bit nervous. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm confident that this, this, is a, this is a done deal. Well... That's died down and we're back underway. Doulis. Clacky wins his header. Oh, Dwayne's clearance will go straight up in the air and Martin will try and pounce on it and he's going to win a free kick on the edge of the area. I mean, it's, there's been so many tactical fouls this game. It's uh, pick, Some people love them, some people hate them. It's gamesmanship at its finest. Well, that wasn't gamesmanship. He was always going to give that one. That was, I think, what, as soon as the ball had been poorly kicked away. And it's a really dangerous position for the ball now, isn't it? Yeah. Into the last minute of added time. Talit's going to look to whip it in and, and it's, it's straight you, into the hands Chester of Willis. Billy celebrates that like a goal again. And Chester will be fuming because he has just curled it into Willis's hands. It's just a waste. Out, I mean, so no many times. So many times with Chester they've had the ball in good positions, good chances, and they waste it. Corners don't beat the first man. Free kicks straight into the goalkeeper's hands. Two or three times now. Sloppy passes going straight out for throw-ins. I mean, they've got into good positions on the edge of the area. Instead of moving the ball along or putting it into the box, someone's tried a fancy skill and they've lost the ball. And that's ultimately what's cost them today. Individual errors. 
Claxton throws the ball down the line towards the corner. Taylor will head it up. Lund will win it. Burke will head it back again. Newell wins. Weeks looks down the line for Thomas. Perrett's going to chase over. Fresh legs looks makes like it's not all the difference. <laughs> looks like it's not missed a minute. No, not Mr. Beat Harry Perrett. Down the line. Perrett's going to see it back to Willis, who well done. will knock it up. And that, and that is, is full time. A massive, massive win in the playoff bid for Alfreton. It was Ken Diggy at the double who gave Alfreton the two goals that they needed to get all three points here this afternoon. Our in first win against Chester in, in 10, ten years. years. And our first time, Matty. Our first time. <laughs> I Me and Quinton come to Chester once, we get one win. These guys next to us what? either side have been waiting 10 years. And all you this. needed was a Matty and a Quinton boss. Go on. A 2-0 two, two win, nevertheless, three points in the bag. Ken Diggy at the double. We'll quickly run through the scores around the ground before we go for the final time here in Chester this afternoon. So, across the other leagues, obviously not all these games are done yet, but Borough 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Notts County 3, MK Dons 3, as they get a last-minute equaliser there. Kidderminster 3, Chesterfield 1, Brackley 3, Tamworth 0. Charlie 2, Blythe 0. Curzon 2, South Shields 0. Hereford 1, Buxton 2. That game's still being played, but that could be a huge result for us if Buxton hold on there. From 3-0 down to 3-3, Scarborough have equalised at Kings Lynn to nav a point. <laughs> and they've, I've literally they've not seen the ball. They've all come last 10 minutes. Wow. Lewis Maloney twice. He's from Middlesbrough. Three, from 3-0 three down in 10 minutes with 10 minutes to go. Peterborough Sports 1, Gloucester City 0, Rushall Olympic 1, Boston 0, Southport 0, Scunthorpe 1, Spenny Moore 3, Farsley Celtic 1 and Darlington 3, Warrington 1, sorry I forgot Bishop Stortford also beat Brambury 3-1, that game has already finished. And before we close off, the current league table as it stands, Tamworth on played 43, 89 points, Scunthorpe occupying second position on 79 points, Chorley in third, 77, Bracken in fourth, 76, we currently hold fifth position on 42 games having 70 points that is just above Curzon on goal difference but that's quite a hefty goal difference with 11 goals and Boston hold the last position in the playoffs in 7th on 68 points so 2 points in the safety um, with, with a game in Andover South Shields who are in 8th on 68 points so we a have a, massive we have a win game today. in Andover a few teams get in join us on Saturday for a massive playoff 6 pointer against Curzon it's going to be huge for both team seasons but for now thank you everyone for tuning in to the Alfred Town official live watch along here in Chester and we hope to see you very soon against Curzon Ashton on Saturday at the Impact Arena